When buying a new bike, most riders will adjust everything from tire pressure to handlebar width. And for good reason. The better suited a bike is to your own particular riding style, the faster, more comfortable, and most importantly, more fun your rides will be. But a weird thing happens when people buy their first e-bike. I'd be willing to bet that a vast majority of those new owners never tune or adjust their motor, even though it can be done super easily right from your phone or computer. Why bother? Well, these small changes can greatly impact the bike's battery range, assistance level, and even handling characteristics. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the three main tuning parameters that are adjustable across pretty much every modern e-bike manufacturer, and then go ahead and adjust those and make some custom setups that we're gonna to put to the test later on. The bike I'm using for this video is the Trek Fuel EXE, which uses a TQ drive system. But the process is relatively similar regardless of your bike or motor manufacturer. The first step is to download your specified app, which in my case is Trek Central. From there, you'll be able to find those three tuning parameters, which TQ calls max power, assist, and pedal response. Max power is pretty self-explanatory. It's the maximum wattage that your motor will put out, regardless of the amount of wattage your legs are putting into the pedal. Now, if you wanna learn more about wattage and some of the other e-bike terms I'm talking about in this video, we actually did a whole video on e-bike terminology that I'll link somewhere in here, and you can go check that out right now or after you watch this video. The max wattage on the mid mode of my Fuel EXE is 180 watts, but you can adjust this anywhere from 30 to 300. Next up is assist, and that's basically a ratio of the amount of power the motor is putting out compared to the amount of power your legs are putting out. And the TQ motor here in the Trek does this with a percentage. So for example, if you set your assist to 100%, that means that your motor will exactly match what your legs are doing. So if you put 100 watts out, your motor will put 100 watts out. The mid mode on this TQ motor is set to 112%. So again, if I'm putting 100 watts through the pedals, the motor will put out 112 watts. Most other e-bikes will allow you to adjust that same parameter, though they're probably gonna call it something different and might even use a different equation to come up with that ratio. For instance, Fazua calls it support relation, Shimano calls it assist character, and Specialized just calls it ease. The final parameter we'll talk about is what TQ and Trek call pedal response, and that's essentially how quickly the motor will input that power once you begin pedaling. On my app, this is adjustable via a sliding scale, and in the mid power mode, it's set to dead center. A quicker pedal response will of course mean you'll get up to speed more easily, but it can have negative handling implications, especially on technical climbs where the quicker acceleration could compromise grip and balance. Just like the other two, you will be able to find this on just about every e-bike, but it might have some different names like ramp up, start assist, or again, with TQ, pedal response. So with that basic knowledge at hand, let's go ahead and make some custom tuning setups for two hypothetical riders. Up uh, first, we'll have Mr. Sit and Spin, whose priority is to get in as many laps at his local Enduro Zone as possible without draining his or his bike's battery. In this case, we'll bump the assist level up to the full 200%, meaning the motor will double his input, saving more of his energy for the descents. But since Sit and Spin Guy is equally worried about draining his bike's battery, we're gonna go ahead and lower the max watt output to just 100 watts. Essentially, what this means is that our rider will be able to sit and slow pedal at say 100 watts, and the motor will then output that same 100 watts, giving him a total of 200 watts. So he'll get up the hill with not much effort, but also not very quickly, and most importantly, he won't be draining his battery. Lastly, since Sit and Spin Guy usually climbs fire roads, we'll go ahead and slide his pedal response all the way up to max. This combination of a higher assistance percentage but decreased max output should make getting up the climbs a slow but leisurely affair. Next up, we have Miss Grip and Rip, who loves a challenging climb just as much as she loves a fast descent. For her technical single track trails, we'll bring the assist percent down to 100% for a more natural feel, as well as lower the pedal response to help make sure she doesn't lose traction while climbing slick routes or loose switchbacks. Lastly, we'll slide the max power all the way up to 300 watts, meaning she can rely on that same one-to-one -one ratio regardless of how much effort she puts through the pedals. Both of these custom setups lie between the upper and lower limits of the TQ setting, so we could consider them adaptations of that mid mode. But what I really wanna know, and I'm guessing you do too, is how these two custom setups, as well as the default mid mode that TQ has this bike tuned for, actually feel in the real world. So let's go out there and take some laps in each of these modes. And along the way, we'll take a look at how much effort the bike's putting out, 
how much effort I'm putting in and ultimately see if we can figure out how you should set your e-bike up. All right, we are starting our first test run, our first test climb in the default mid mode that this bike comes with. Uh, as you can see here, we're starting with 82% battery charge. So not only will we be able to see how much charge we go through uh, after we finish the ride, we can actually get back on that Trek, uh, Trek Central app and be able to see things like the max motor output, um, my peak pedaling output, all, sorts, all, all sorts of cool stats. And speaking of stats, there's actually a lot of really cool stuff you can do on this display screen. Um, one of my favorites is to go here where you can see the rider watt and the motor watt. So you can see right now I'm putting out about 200 watts and the motor is sitting tight at right around 180, which makes sense because that's what this mid mode is peaked at. Uh, as a reminder, the peak power, the max power of the default mid is 180 watts and that's at 112%. So the motor will do 112% of what I'm doing up to 180 watts. So let's talk about our route today. Um, here in Central Oregon, there's really not a lot of single track that you're allowed to ride pedal assist bikes on. So sadly, all of our data today, just gonna be here on a fire road. So while we're climbing, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about this bike. Um, so this is the Trek Fuel EXE 9.9 XO axis. We used it in our lightweight EMTB head-to-head -head test. Um, and if you haven't seen those videos yet, I'll throw a link somewhere in here where you can go and check that out. But one of the things we liked about this bike was just how natural to ride it felt. It definitely was not as powerful as some of the other bikes on test, but the power delivery was very smooth. It's relatively light. And so far on this climb, honestly, if I didn't know any better, I would think that uh, I had just gained some superpowers. You, you can't hear the motor at all. The power delivery, so I talked about earlier that TQ calls it pedal response. It's so smooth. There's none of that kind of jolting on and off sensation like you get from some other motors. Battery consumption here, we started at 82, we're now at 75. All right, well, we made it to the top and uh, let's go find ourselves a little section of shade and pull up the data that we got from this climb on the default mid mode and then we'll rinse and repeat and do it again. So here we can see that the peak rider output, my output was 332 watts. The peak motor output was 194 watts and then it consumed 9% of battery. Now, we're gonna go ahead and cruise back down one of these trails here, and then we're gonna do it again in sit and spin mode. So let's just real quick while we're here, go ahead and set that up. All right, back at it again, climb number two in sit and spin mode. As you can see, my battery's at 73%, and my output right now, 200 watts, and you can see we're peaking out here at 100. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get down here into a, lower gear and just sit and spin. Try to lower my wattage, conserve my energy while conserving the bike's energy and just be okay with the fact that it's gonna take a little more time to get up the hill. Speaking of time, I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up. So I'll meet you back at the top again and we'll look at the data we collect from this climb. All right, lap two is a wrap. Let's go ahead and take a look at our data here. All right, already I can see that the battery consumption was almost the exact same. Interestingly though, you can see that my average rider power was down at just 129 watts and the average motor power was 84.5. I'm surprised that wasn't closer to 100, but regardless. Right now though, let's go ahead and change our motor settings over for ride number three, which is of course Miss Grip and Rip. All right, well, <clears throat> slight false alarm there. We're actually uh, the next morning because my camera died shortly into filming that third test. So day two, Miss Grip and Rip 300 max watts. We're starting out here at 90% on the battery. Right now, if we look, we can see that I'm putting in 220 watts and I'm getting 150 or so out of the bike. And that's because I did adjust that um, assist percentage down to 75%, just to give it a little more differentiation from the normal mid mode. Now, one last thing that I did here is I lowered the pedal response down to about 25%. So what that means is the motor is gonna essentially engage a little more slowly, which will make it a little bit smoother. 
Um, I really did notice actually the kind of jerkiness when I maxed out that pedal response with Mr. Sit and Spin. For riding single track, you definitely would not want that. And even on the fire road, it felt just kind of like a little jarring, a little unsettling. Uh, probably too because I had that assist percentage maxed out at 100%. So far with this 25% versus the 50% in the default mid mode, I haven't really noticed much of a difference. But again, I think where you would, would be on more single track trails. All right, just now making it to the top of the climb. Let's go back to our favorite little shady spot where you can see the screen and uh, see what the data tells us. All right, funny. So ride time was identical to the mid mode. Seven minutes and 47 seconds versus seven minutes and 48 seconds. That's actually pretty shocking. But if we look in a little bit closer, we can see that there are some differences. For one, we did use 1% more battery, jumping from 9% to 10%. And also our peak motor output, of course, was quite a bit higher, up to 310 watts, as well as my peak rider output, maxing out at 349. In terms of calories that I burned, it ended up being right about in the middle. Uh, on this particular ride, I burned, let's see, 97 calories, according to what the app estimates, as opposed to 94 in the normal mid mode, and whatever that was, like 100, 101 in the sit and spin mode. All right, so let's finish up with a quick recap of what I found there. And I think my biggest takeaway was just how different those three different test rides felt, despite using pretty much the exact same amount of battery. And I think what that really touches on is that there's more than one way to climb on an e-bike, and you can set your e-bike up to fit that specific climbing style. For instance, with Mr. Sit and Spin Guy, it took me almost twice as long to get up there. That's because I was just sitting and cruising slowly along, but since I wanted to maintain my battery, I brought that assist percentage down. Now, you could have left it at 112%, you could have put it at 300% or whatever it maxes out at, but you'd be using a lot more battery. On the flip side to that, with Miss Grip and Rip, again, those numbers were actually surprisingly almost identical to that of the normal mid mode, but where I really noticed the difference was on those steep climbs. And when I put more effort into the bike, the bike really rewarded that with more power from the motor. Whereas on the less steep, more flat sections of the road, I was actually probably getting less assistance since I brought that assist percentage down to just 75%. So what does all this mean to you? Well, if you have an e-bike, I highly encourage you to figure out what app it is that you use, whether it's you know that Trek Central app, the Shimano e-tube app, the specialized whatever they call it app, get your app and start messing with those things and figure out what setup fits you best. Now, if you've already done that and you have some suggestions, then please go ahead and leave those in the comments so the rest of us can learn from your experimentation. Now, while you're there, as always, if you haven't done so already, please go ahead and like this video and subscribe to the 999 Spokes channel where we upload a new video every Friday. And lastly, remember that bikes are for everyone. Have fun out there.